हेलो गाइज आई होप यू आर डूइंग वेल वेलकम टू अन अकेडमी स्टूडियोज ब्रिज टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चन दैट दे हैव आस्ट इन एक्सेल लोडिंग चैप्टर इन द सब्जेक्ट मैकेनिक्स ऑफ सॉलिड्स सो लेट्स गो अट मैकेनिक्स ऑफ सॉलिड्स एज यू नो इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट एज फार एज गेट इज कंसर्न नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चन दे हैव आस्ट from mechanics of solids and in mechanics of solids axial loading is one of the important topics why because as you will see number of problems and very frequently they have asked problems from this particular topic so uh, before i go ahead let me just briefly introduce myself i am marut tiwari i did my masters from id kharagpur and i have been a recipient of multiple awards out there i have cracked gate multiple times and i'm also an author of the book gate in 75 days all right which is one of the one of the best sellers in gate segment gate gate segment uh you can follow me on an academy by clicking on this particular link by going to this particular link you can follow me on an academy to follow the courses that i'm going to take on an academy platform because in uh, the month of december i'm going to take number of revision courses so currently i'm associated with an academy and like uh, like me a number of educators out there are associated a number of educators my dear friends are associated with an academy and number of outstanding educators are associated with an academy an academy provides you a win win situation and a lot of features that are that are undeniable and that are going to give you the best possible deal as far as gate preparation is concerned there are so many courses that you can access that you can access completely for free and then you have a flexible schedule and you can you can attend your lectures in english you can attend your lectures in hindi and you can do unlimited practice as many times as you want to watch you can watch the sessions and unless you get the total command you can keep watching all right so and uh, just in case if you learn for your gate preparation at an academy platform then the plus window is going to look something like this 90% or maybe 70 80% of it the content is going to be there and then in a side window educator is going to be there you can you can watch the educator you can you know interact with him or her and you can ask your doubts you can ask your queries to the educators and educators can reply to you can you know respond to you in the real time and they can also conduct some polls and in those polls you can participate and you can learn any time and anywhere that's one of the best things so you see a lot of flexibility is there a lot of convenience is there but at the same time you feel like a real classroom like environment there are so many packages like in terms of packages also you have multiple packages flexibility is there there is a monthly package you can go for 3 months package you can go for 6 months package you can go for 12 months package and you can also go for 24 months package just in case if you go for 24 months package my dear friends there is one time cost of 40000 rupees but 40000 divided into 24 months it's effectively going to come down to only 1667 rupees per month now this is something unmatchable this is something unprecedented that you get a lot of convenience flexibility freedom and and quality at such a value for money at such a cost effective you know package you get all this in fact if you use my code mt live then you can further bring it down you can further bring it down and the actual cost i mean after you use the code mt live then you'll have to pay just 36000 rupees 36000 divided by 24 is nothing but just 1500 rupees a month so look how cost effective it is you can also go for 12 months package 12 months package is going to cost you one time payment of 25000 and 25000 divided by 12 is just 2083 rupees per month 
so effectively you pay just 2083 rupees per month in fact if you use my code mt live to subscribe for the package then you can bring it down even further all right and rather than paying 25000 you just pay 22500 and this will be even lesser than 2000 rupees a month effectively so this is very easy just go ahead and today itself uh, install the unacademy learning app and after installing the unacademy learning app choose gate as your goal particularly to those of my friends who are preparing for gate 2021 i would recommend you to start the preparation as early as possible and go for at least 12 months package i would rather recommend you to go for a 24 months package so that you can flawlessly you can keep learning and consistently you can keep following so many educators but go ahead and choose gate choose an academy as your gate learning gate preparation platform so this is very easy as you can see and there are so many packages go ahead subscribe for them and start start doing your preparation seriously now let us go ahead and discuss about the topic sir i'm going to discuss the problems gate problems that they have asked in axial loading chapter and i'm going to discuss in the current session i'm going to discuss one mark problems and in the next session in the part two that i'll make uh, like subsequently in that i'll discuss two marks problems but before we go ahead and discuss the problems that they have asked from this axial loading chapter here is a very brief summary of key concepts and formulae that you'll have to keep in mind in fact there are four things that you'll have to keep in mind the first thing is the calculation of load the second thing is the calculation of stress the third thing is the calculation of elongation due to axial loading and the fourth and final thing will be about the thermal stress the fourth and final thing will be about thermal stress they have asked multiple problems based on thermal stress so let me discuss about them one by one how do you calculate the load to calculate the load in case of axially loaded members to calculate the load all you need to do is wherever you have to calculate the load you just need to look at any one side you just need to look at either side of that section and just sum up everything from that either side okay you just need to look at either side of the section and from either side of this that section just sum up everything but while summing up just just make sure that you are treating tensile as a positive and compressive as a negative load you'll have to take the load according to their algebraic signs but either side is a powerful concept it's always going to work no matter how complicated the problem is wherever you have to calculate the load just look at any one side of that particular section now let us talk about the stress stress due to axial loading will be uniform like if you have an axially loaded member then to resist to that axial load stress will be induced at any given point stress will be induced at any given point at any given cross section stress will be induced something like this and it will be uniformly distributed at one given section you will have the same value top to bottom you'll have the same value and that value is gonna be that value how would you decide that value that value you decide in two possible ways first way is simply load divided by area and second one is Hooke's law and Hooke's law is sigma is equal to e multiplied by epsilon so please do remember this universal equation of axial loading this is something useful for us for our current session and whatever we are going to discuss further now let us talk about elongation how do you calculate the elongation values from here you can compare the first part and third part and then you can write elongation as what then you can write elongation as delta L as PL divided by EA. I'm sorry, second and third part. The second and third part, you can write delta L as P into L divided by EA. 
and if you compare the first and third part then you can write delta l as sigma into l divided by e isn't it so this is very simple and please do remember this please do uh, memorize this because they have asked number of problems based on this and my dear friends my dear friends there is one more variation here as far as elongation problems are concerned sometimes they will ask some problems where load elasticity and area will be varying and just in case if they ask a problem where the load or elasticity or area is varying then you will have to use this formula on a differential length and after using it on a differential length you will have to integrate it similarly this one you will have to use this formula on a differential length and after using it on a differential length you will have to integrate it to get the total elongation the fourth and the final point is regarding the thermal stress any problem regarding thermal stress and you just keep in mind that thermal stress will be present only and only and only and only when restriction is there when restriction is there then my dear friends thermal stress will be present if restriction is not there then thermal stress will not be present why because suppose you have got a member and that member is having a tendency to expand suppose you have got a member and that member is having a tendency to expand in all possible directions something like this now if you are not putting any restriction if you are keeping it free to expand why would it resist like think about it if the material wants to expand but you are not putting any restriction you are allowing it to expand then why would it resist it is naturally not going to resist so keep this in mind that thermal stress will be present only and only and only when there is some restriction the restriction may be complete the restriction may be partial but some restriction has to be there for thermal stress to be present so please keep these four things in your mind as of now i have been very brief and very quick in telling you all these four key concepts here but don't worry as we apply them into the problems you will have a mastery over all these four concepts so let's go ahead and do this my dear friends uh, in 2004 they asked this particular problem in 2004 they asked this particular problem for one mark and this problem says that we have got two identical rods of circular section and they have the same dia and they have the same length they have the same dia and they have the same length and they are also subjected to same magnitude of axial tensile force but they have the same length they have the same dia and they are subjected to the same load but one of them is made of mild steel and it is having a modulus of elasticity of 206 gigapascal and another of them is made of cast iron and it is having a modulus of elasticity value of 100 gigapascal then further as usual homogeneous isotropic things are given coming to the options first option is that both rods will elongate by the same amount the second option is that mild steel rod is going to elongate more and the third option is that cast iron rod is going to elongate more now you see this is a problem that you can solve in in ma maximum 5 seconds why because dia is equal so area will be equal and length is equal and load is equal only elasticity is different and mild steel is having greater elasticity in comparison of mild steel is having greater elasticity in comparison of the cast iron isn't it in comparison of cast iron mild steel is having greater modulus of elasticity value and if we go back just one slide and if we look at the delta l formula we have the delta l formula is p into l divided by e into a so we can very clearly see that elongation is inversely proportional to modulus of elasticity value so elongation is inversely proportional to modulus of elasticity value naturally if elasticity is more elongation will be less 
and if elasticity is less if elasticity is less elongation will be more isn't it elongation will be more just in case if elasticity is less there will be more elongation so now out of these two materials naturally cast iron is having lesser elasticity and if cast iron is having lesser elasticity sir naturally it is going to have more elongation if cast iron is having lesser elasticity then its elongation is going to be for cast iron elongation is going to be more and more so therefore the third option is correct one that cast iron rod cast iron rod will elongate more than the mild steel rod okay so this is how we solve it now let me take you to the next the next problem is again a 2004 problem and this 2004 problem says that this 2004 problem says that we have uniform rod uniform means cross sectional area is similar everywhere and cylindrical rod slender means that its length is slender means what okay let me describe all these terms here this is something useful uniform means that cross sectional area is not changing at all cross sectional area is constant slender means what slender means that the length is much more than the dia slender means that the length is much more than dia and cylindrical means what cylindrical means that cross sectional area is circular and then it is homogeneous as usual isotropic now it is heated uniformly it is heated uniformly and it has been kept at a frictionless surface then they are asking what is the stress in radial direction and what is the stress in axial direction what is the stress in radial direction and what is the stress in axial direction this is what they are asking okay so let's go ahead and try solving this guys we have this cylindrical rod of circular section that has been kept at a frictionless surface something like this naturally you'll have a point contact and then you are heating it uniformly so when you are heating it uniformly naturally the rod will have a tendency to expand not only in radial direction but also in axial direction the rod will have a tendency to expand the rod will have a tendency to expand something like this not only in radial direction this expansion i'm representing for radial direction but also in axial direction now where is the axial direction where exactly is the axial direction axial direction is coming out of your screen axial direction is the direction perpendicular to your uh, screen of your phone so the rod is free in radial direction also and the rod is free in axial direction also and if it, even if it is free to expand in radial and axial directions naturally it is not going to impose any resistance why because it wants to expand and you are allowing it to expand as long as you are allowing it to expand naturally it is going to pose no resistance no you know stress or uh, internal force of resistance will be developed because I told you that thermal stress will be present if we go back to the summary of concepts I told you that thermal stress will be present only when some restriction is there so here as you can see in this particular rod that we have there is no restriction it can expand in all possible directions it can expand in radial direction also it can expand in axial direction also so we can immediately conclude we can immediately conclude that radial direction and axial direction stress will be zero first option is the correct one now let us go ahead and try solving as a next problem solving this 2007 problem that they asked for one mark this 2007 problem that they asked for one mark this particular problem says that we have got a steel rod of length L and diameter D and 
this is fixed at both the ends now this is a useful information this is fixed at both the ends and we are raising the temperature by delta t young's modulus is e and coefficient of thermal expansion is alpha thermal stress of the rod they are asking so now it is fixed at both the ends and if it is fixed at both the ends my dear friends if it is fixed at both the ends then you tell me if it is fixed at both the ends and you are raising the temperature then restriction is there or not sir complete restriction is there why because at negative x at positive x at both the places you are fixing it so naturally you are not allowing it to expand in any given direction now sometimes people might think that sometimes people might think that there is freedom to expand in y direction and z direction and in fact all possible radial directions so why are we considering only this longitudinal direction radial directions rod is very much free to expand why are we not considering radial direction because my dear friends the rod whenever they talk about a rod or something just keep this in mind that length will be much more than dia therefore changes happening in diameter and all will be insignificant all right so we don't have to consider the you know biaxial or triaxial scenario by default we will have to consider if they are asking the stress we will have to consider by default we will have to consider the longitudinal stress all right so this is what they are asking let's go ahead and try calculating it because restriction is there so if restriction is there in which direction restriction is there restriction is present in which direction restriction is present in x direction so because restriction is there thermal stress will be present i told you in the very beginning when i was summarizing the things that thermal stress will be present when restriction is there if restriction is not there then there will be no thermal stress but if restriction is there then 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 thermal stress will be present how do you calculate it you calculate it using hooks law but whenever you are using hooks law be careful only calculate only consider only include that strain which is representing the restricted strain and restricted strain is going to be what restricted strain is going to be restricted expansion restricted expansion divided by original length now what is the restricted expansion here so total expansion we have restricted only i mean there is nothing allowed here absolutely nothing allowed here so we have restricted total expansion here sir all right total expansion has been killed so that total expansion which is alpha l delta t has been totally killed here so now l is going to get cancelled and if l is going to get cancelled we get thermal stress value simply as e alpha delta t we get thermal stress value simply as e alpha delta t so you see which option is correct we have the third option as the correct one third option is the correct one so this is a very simple problem and you can solve thermal stress problems like this as a next problem let us consider this gate 2013 problem as a fourth problem let's consider this gate 2013 problem that they asked for one mark this particular problem they asked for one mark the problem says that the problem says that let me describe the problem first of all the problem says that we have got a rod of length l and having uniform cross sectional area a and it is subjected to some tensile force it is subjected to some tensile force p like this and elasticity of the material is varying linearly from e1 value at one extreme to e2 value at another extreme then they are asking the axial stress the normal stress developed due to this axial tensile load so due to this axial tensile load what will be the normal stress this is what they are asking let's calculate it it's very easy to calculate due to axial tensile load normal stress is simply p by a and p by a is as simple as as that 
So P by A is as simple as that. You get the answer in a matter of one second. But people get confused here. That elasticity is varying. Won't it have any impact on the stress values? No, sir. On the stress values, elasticity will not have any impact. As far as this variation in elasticity is concerned, it will have the impact. It will have the impact on elongation characteristics of this rod. Sigma will not be impacted by elasticity. Sigma will not be impacted by elasticity. Elasticity will change. So delta L will change. Then elasticity and delta L will change in such a way that sigma will remain uninfluenced. Sigma will remain constant. And by definition, it must remain constant. Why? Because if 100 kN load has to be resisted, and if 10 molecules are there present at all possible sections, then 100 divided by 10 each molecule will have to take. I'm just taking an example that if 100 kN load has to be resisted, and if 10 molecules are there at each and every given cross section, then my dear friends, 100 divided by 10. One molecule will have to take 10 kN load, no matter what. Alright, so material properties have nothing to do with how much stress is getting induced in one given material. Alright, I'm not talking about limiting stress values. I'm talking about actual stress that is getting developed. Okay, so it is simply P by A. Now let us discuss as a next problem. Let us discuss this 2014 problem. This is again a problem based on thermal stress. The problem says that we have got a circular rod of length L and cross sectional area is A, modulus of elasticity is E and coefficient of thermal expansion is alpha. Alright, one end of the rod is fixed but the other one is free. Now here we end the problem. Like It is very simple. Once they say that one end of the rod is fixed and another end is free. That means what? That means the rod is free to expand. And if the rod is free to expand, if the rod is free to expand, my dear friends, if the rod is free to expand, naturally there will be no thermal stress induced in the rod. The rod wants to expand and you are allowing it to expand, simple. I mean, why would the rod resist? The rod is not going to resist. So stress is going to be zero. I told you in the very beginning that, I told you in the very beginning at the time I was briefing you about the concepts that thermal stress will be present only when restrictions are there. Maybe partial restriction, maybe complete restriction, but restriction has to be there. And here in our current problem, this 2014 problem, there is no restriction. And if there is no restriction, thermal stress will be zero. So thermal stress is zero where thermal stress is zero in the second option. Second option is stress is zero. And not only the second option, but the third option also, the stress in the rod is given as zero. So which one is correct? Second one or the third one? Sir, in the second one, they are saying a strain is also zero. That is a false information. Why? Because the strain is not zero. The rod is absolutely allowed to change. And if the rod is absolutely allowed to change, then it is going to develop some strain. Then it is going to develop some elongation and it is going to develop some strain. So strain is not zero. Stress is zero here. And therefore, we have stress zero but a strain is not zero therefore we have the third option as the correct one as a next problem let us try solving this 2017 problem that they asked for one mark this 2017 problem they asked for one mark so this particular problem and i'm sorry to say this to you that alpha was given in the problem i just missed it to be included here in the uh, composition so alpha is given in the problem. Please consider that. Alpha is given in the problem. I just missed it somehow. And this is a rod that is fixed at both the ends. So we have this steel bar that is fixed at both the ends. 
and temperature is being increased by 100 degree celsius and elasticity of the material is given as 200 gigapascal alpha is also given i just happened to you know uh, not include it somehow so please consider that alpha value is given you will have to calculate the magnitude of thermal stress you will have to calculate the magnitude of thermal stress in the rod in megapascal now once again you see rod is free in radial direction in radial direction it is absolutely free it is very much free but by default we'll consider axial stress all right by default we'll consider axial stress i told you so axially the rod is totally restricted in x direction the rod is totally restricted and if it is restricted then thermal stress will be present then thermal stress will be present isn't it now thermal stress calculation will be done how how you will calculate that thermal stress thermal stress you will calculate by using hooke's law which is e multiplied by epsilon but i told you that whenever you are using hooke's law here in thermal stress problems you will have to consider only that part of the strain which is restricted only that part of the strain which is restricted so let us consider it that part of the strain which is restricted can be written as that part of the uh, expansion which is restricted that part of thermal expansion which has been restricted which has been killed divided by original length now what is this are you restricting it completely or are you restricting it partially naturally you are restricting restricting it completely why because you have a fixed support at left extreme and you have fixed support at right extreme so total expansion whatever expansion must have happened you have killed entire expansion you are not allowing the rod even by 0 0.00000001 mm all right so total total restriction is there and therefore total free expansion that could have taken place has been killed here now l is going to get cancelled from numerator and denominator and if you cancel l you get finally the thermal stress value is e alpha delta t which is very similar to this which is very similar to this 2007 problem that we solved e alpha delta t e alpha delta t is something that you are getting in this 2017 problem also now e value is given and alpha value is also given delta t is also given e value is given to you as 200 into 10 power 3 megapascal alpha is given as i said in the very beginning as i clarified and delta t is also given delta t value is 100 degree celsius so you can calculate the thermal stress value from here this was this was a numerical answer type problem and this is how you're going to complete it so this was a discussion about various one mark pro problems that have been asked in gate in last 19 years 2001 to 2019 in the next session we are going to discuss about two marks problems uh, two marks problems they asked from axial loading they asked in 2004 they asked in 2006 again in 2006 2012 and then 2015 2016 2016 again 2017 and 2018 so you see roughly almost every single year they have been asking one problem from this particular chapter and in the next part of this video in the next session we are going to solve all these two marks problems but please make sure that you go to the very first slide of this video and please make sure that you absorb those four important concepts that i told you for solving any axial loading problem thank you so very much for watching the session i just hope that you enjoyed the session as much as i did just hit the bell icon to keep receiving the notifications uh, like whenever I, whenever my videos are uploaded you must get the notifications to keep your preparation going on 
and whenever you subscribe for any an academy plus package don't forget to use my code mt live to get 10% additional discount thank you very much guys